Today's daf is daf mem beis. We're going to start with Tanur Abanon, two lines up before the bottom of mem aleph amid beis. We learned in a brayse Yevama shecholtzula achim b'toch shlosha. In a case where the chalitza took place within three months of the death of the late brother. And she's not allowed to get married to anyone immediately after the chalitza. We start a kickoff from the day of the death of the husband, her, the Yavama's husband, and only after three months is she allowed to get married. And now we start Daf Membeis. If, on the other hand, the chalitza took place three months following the death of their brother, we don't begin the count of three months so we allow her to get married from the day of the chalitza. We start with the day of the death of the husband. And the Chiddush here is that we had a Havamina, maybe she should wait three months after the Chalitza, because the Rabbana considered Chalitza like a get. And if a man divorces his wife, then from the day of the get, we count three months before she, the Megureshes, is permitted to get remarried. If we apply that same yardstick to Chalitza, we would have to wait a full three months after the Chalitza until she's allowed to get married. Heavy, what we derive from this is that we start the count, as we said before, from the Misa Sabal, below Mishas Chalitza Yovam, no matter when the Chalitza takes place. And it could be that she'd be allowed to get married the same day of, of the Chalitza. She could have both a Chalitza ceremony and a marriage ceremony to a new husband on the same day because. The chalitza took place three months after the death of her first husband. So Gemara immediately asks Maishna, me get? Why is it that with regard to get, we start counting three months after the get is delivered? And chalitza, which seems to be a replacement for a get in the case of a, of a of Yav, Yavama, we should likewise count three months from the day of the chalitza. The Gemara says, that there are differences between chalitza and get, as far as how long the hamtan of the delay should be until she's allowed to get remarried. The Rav Amar, Rav says in the case of Gerishin, Mishas Nesina, that we count three months from the moment of Nesina. Shmuel Amar, we count three months, Mishas Sivas I get, because according to Rav, there's no reason to start counting from Shask Siva. In fact, we should be choshesh for a person who left to Medina Sayyam, and let's say he divorced both of his wives on the same day. And one of them, he wrote a date on the get a month before he actually delivered the get. And with regard to his second wife, the date on the get was exactly the date of Messina Seget, of the actual marriage. The first wife is going to get married two months after the Nesina, because the Ksiva was a month before the Nesina. So if we're counting three months from Ksiva, i.e. the Sheet of Shmuel, then Rav argues that his first wife is going to count two months after the Nesina Seget. Now, people are going to say, wait a minute, the second wife, and keep in mind that he divorced both wives on the same day, the second wife is going to have to wait three months from the Nasina Seget, not two months. So the one wife waits only two months, according to Shmuel's logic, because the Ksiva was a month before the Nasina, and the other one has to wait a full three months. 
So what is this all about? When we get to month number three, Zu Asura Vizumu Teres. In other words, in the mind of the spectator, what's the difference? You know, they don't know that the Ksiva was separated from the Nasina by a month and all that. They think the Ksiva was right on the same day as the Nasina. So they're going to come to a situation where if you're going to be Matir, the first wife whose get was written a month earlier, and then you only have to account for two months after the Nasina, they're going to apply the same yardstick to the second wife whose Ksiva and Nasina was on the same day, and they're going to allow her to go and get married after two months. So according to Rav, who says that we count from the Sinus get, and this means that even though from the time of the Ksiva, Rav doesn't deny that there's no Het the Yich, the Baal and his wife, and I let it be together in one private place once the get was written. And if they would violate that Easter and be in a Yichud situation alone in a private place after the Ksiva Seget, it would possibly get, that's called the Get Yashan. So we see that we go Basar Nasina. Everything is determined by Nasina. So that there won't be any possibility of being Matirha within three months. We're going to have to wait a full three months, says Rav, after the Nasina. Forget about Ksiva, which could cut down the waiting period to two months, for example. Therefore, the Gemara is bothered if we apply the same yardstick to the, to the Chalitza situation, we should be counting three months before we allow to get married after the Chalitza. Otherwise, you know, the spectator is going to think, well, let's say, you know, there were other cases of Chalitza and the Chalitza was closer to the Misa, and we're going to assume that all you have to wait is two months. You know, this whole business is, 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 is very tricky. You're telling me that we're going to wait, you know, we're going to wait three months after the Chalitza. That would make sense, but if you're going to say that, you know, the Gemara says... It's not just the Gemara. I mean, that's the uh, price that we started with. That we had from the Misa Sabal three months. I and mean, people look at the Chalitza and they see that in this case, you know, she had the Chalitza. She got married uh, almost immediately afterwards because it took a while from the Misa till the Chalitza. And in another case, they can assume, well, if it if the if the Bezdin gave her a Rishus to get remarried right after the Chalitza, they're going to apply that yardstick straight across the board. Even in the case where the Chalitza took place immediately after the Misa. Oh, my Rava, Rava says, you're right. Even in the case of Chalitza, we should logically say that we should wait three months after the Chalitza. I'm not denying your logic. And it's not enough to just calculate three months from the Misa Sabah. And therefore, says Rabbi, fundamentally, your analogy is absolutely accurate. Just like in get, you have to wait three months after the Nasina. We should be waiting three months after the Chalitza. However, why is there a difference? Why do we say that after Misa, she waits three months and not after Chalitza? And the answer is Kalvachom. So let's see if we can understand this Kalvachom of Rome. Let's say he's not interested in Chalitza. He wants to be Miyav. Now the din is that if she's pregnant, and the Vlad is a Vlad Shal Kayama, if he would go ahead and be Miyabim her, he would be violating the Iser Kares of Eshes Ach. And nevertheless, he tired him. You allowed him to be Miyabim her immediately after three months from the Misabah. Why? Because you assume that most women, if they're pregnant, then it would be Ubar Nikar after three months. And this case, 
is what we call an iso la yevama lashot. The Torah says, lo siya ish samesa chutzo lishzat. There's no chiv karitz. So that basically, the three month period will cover you for allowing Yibum and being convinced that there won't be any violation of an Isa Kari Savacious Ach through this Yibum. By waiting three months, we've calmed ourselves down. We've guaranteed there's no violation of Aishas Ach because who Kari Ibar and so forth and so forth. And we would know that she's pregnant from the first husband. Now you want to count three months from Chalitza. Well, what's the worst case scenario? If you allow her to get married right after the Chalitza, so you can talk about the Alav of Yavam Shuk. That's only a lot. It's not a Kalvachomer. Is Lokoshke, therefore, for sure, after three months since the Misabal, we can allow her to get married immediately after the Chalitza. Miyat. No need to wait another three months. <coughs> if you'll ask, <coughs> I understand that we can allow it to get remarried, we can allow it to have a Yibum situation immediately after three months following the Misa Baal. But if he opts for Chalitza, you should require another three months after the Chalitza. So here, Tosus, Dibam Aschomai points out that it'll look like a Chuch of Lula. Nobody's going to listen to such a thing. Wait another three months after Chalitza? You waited, you waited three months after the Misa? Therefore, the Chacham made a distinction between Get and Chalitza. And they said, we're going to waive the requirement of Habtana Shlocha Chadashim after Chalitza. Once three months went by after the Sabal, we've covered our bases and protected any violation of Yisakar Yisvashis. Ah! And now, with regard to Chalitza, we're not going to equate it with the Yisra Yisak of Yibum, and therefore we'll allow it to get remarried immediately after the Chalitza. And don't worry about the love of Yivam Elisha. The mission says, "V'chein chol shar shar kol noshin shenis armulu, o shenis gar shelo yis arsu lo yinosu at you shal lahem shal shadoshim." Bishleim says the Gemara. I understand when it says in the Rashi of Fama, she should not have yibum until three months after the death of the husband. Kedamara, as we've explained here on Mem Aleph Omid Beis, that we're afraid that she may be muberes from the first husband. And if the Vlad is a Vlad Shal Kayoma, there's no Zikas Yibum, and you're left with the Iser Erev of Ach, if you allow for Yibum. Ella, Shar Kol Noshin, Amai. The Sefer says that the din is that with regard to other women, we're going to require Hamtana Shal Chachadoshin. Why, why are you requiring Hamtana? There's no Chashash of Eshes Ach. Why shouldn't they be able to get married immediately? Akash Baruch who says in Parashvayir to Avram Avinu that I will be your God for you and your descendants after you. So we're going to dash in this pasuk that Ein Hashchina Shore Elah Vadai Miuchas. When we know Zarech Acharecha, we know La Havchin Ben Zaro Shalrishon Zaro Shalsheni. We know who the father is. That's the entire thrust of the great blessing of Hashra Sachkina. That there's got to be Yuchsin. We have to know this guy is Miyuchas to this father, this to this father. But in our case, if she would get married right after the death of her husband, we don't know whether or not this child is the child of the first husband after nine months, or maybe the child of the second husband after seven months of pregnancy, so that we don't know who the father is. And the Torah says, God's shechina is on us, because of Zarech 
because we have a vada yichus of lezara chachrech of the father. Bosiv rova lefichah ger v'yos. We have a brayso that says a ger v'yos do not Jews him and her. They both converted, and the law is they're not allowed to get married immediately after the gerus, but rather tzrichim lahamtin shloshkadoshe. They too, as new entries into Jewish people, they need to, re- to have three months waiting time until they can get married. So, hacha, the case of Gerus, my lahavchenika. What are you telling me? We want to know whether it's it's this father, that father. What do you mean? You know, we're talking about a guy who now becomes a Jew. And now his Zara's Miuchas Akrov, once there's Gerus. So where's the where's the issue here of uh, of determining, as we said before, of Lahavkin being Zara shall reach on the Zara shall change it? Just doesn't make any sense. So your answer is Hachanami Ika Lahavkin being Zara and Nizra Bekedusha. If you don't make them wait the three month period, you're going to really get into you know a, a, a confusion and a build. Why? Because when was the conception? Was it before the Garrus or after the Garrus? She gives birth after the Garrus, but when when, when was the Zera? When, when, when was she impregnated? We have Zera Shenizah B'Kedusha, which means after the Gerus, and we have Zera Shalom Nizah B'Kedusha, and that's before Gerus. But Rava goes in a different direction. Rava says that the reason why women who were married and divorced, married and widowed, have to wait three months before they get remarried, is Zera, if we allow them to get married immediately, we have to be worried about the possibility of Meuberes. She had a husband, she was divorced, or she was widowed, maybe before the divorce, or before the death, there was an impregnation. And she is Meuberes, Mibala Rishon. She's going to give birth, let's say, seven months after she gets married to the second husband. And people are going to think that this child is a preemie, a seven-month-old baby, to her second husband. When in truth, this child is the son of the first husband, who was born after nine months. The Shema Yisa Esachos if this son who's born from this marriage and the impression, the misimpression is that he is the son of the second husband, he might end, end up marrying his own sister who would be the daughter of the first husband who is married Right, the daughter of the first husband and his wife, the wife was married in a previous marriage. And Yisa Esachosomeovit. Let's say the daughter who was born to the Bala Risha, because we don't know, but that's a possibility, a 50% possibility. Or let's take a better case. Let's take a case of the daughter of her very, very first husband. That daughter might, in fact, be a sister through the mother to this boy who is born to the, to the first husband. And then a brother and a sister are going to marry each other. Possibly. Now, another problem, says Rova, is if we let them get married, let her get married immediately, we have to be worried about the fact that she might have 
an additional child from the second husband after the, the son from the first husband was born. And everyone thinks that these two children, these two boys, are brothers. They share the same father. They were all born for the second husband. When Lamais in truth, this was born for the first husband. So they are brothers from a, pater a maternal mother, common mother, but not from a common father. And if one of them gets married and dies without children, and he falls for even to the other brother, then the other brother might mistakenly think that this is my brother's wife. And he'll come to be Miyavim. When in truth, it's Eshe Sachim Mi'imo. He's going to violate these occurrences of Eshe Sachim Mi'imo. There's no heter of Yivum on Eshe Sachim Mi'imo. Therefore, we have to wait three months. Furthermore, Another reason why we have to make, wait to three months. Maybe she's pregnant for the first husband. She'll give birth seven months later from the second marriage. People will think that this is a preemie child that was born prematurely to the second husband. When in truth, this baby was the son of the first husband, the one who died and was, and was born nine months. No lad Letitia for the first husband. So now we're afraid that the wife will go ahead and get married without Khalisa. She thinks this is a child from her second husband, when in truth it was from a first husband. And now it turns out that Yotzi is Imola Shuk, without Chalitza. Meaning she thinks she had no child from the first husband, but only for the second husband. Therefore, she's not a candidate for Yivum, nor does she need Chalitza. She goes in head, marries a guy without, without getting Chalitza. All because she was assuming that this child that she gave birth to was the son of the Shaman. And he was born prematurely after seven months, when in truth, he's the son of her late husband. after a full nine months of pregnancy. Another reason, says Rob, that we have to be choshesh. Let's say if she's pregnant from her first husband and she gives birth after se seven months after the marriage to the second husband, people think that the child was a preemie that was born to the second husband. He's the father. Well, I said truth. This son is the son of the first husband. And he was born after nine months of pregnancy. Now, if this Ben has a brother from his father, meaning a paternal brother, and that brother doesn't have any children, and he dies, And there's no other brother except for him. She is Kuka Loli Yibo. <clears throat> he thinks, on the other hand, that he is the son of the second husband, not of the deceased. Who Yiftar Sivim Tolashuk. Eishes Achiv Hames Michalitza. He'll patter him up from Chalitza. So all these are the logical reasons why we have to wait three months. Now, let's talk about Ger and Yoris. If you remember, that was our 
original problem. And Rav wants to come up with a new solution, not just how to make Zeresh and Nizra B'Kedusha, the Zeresh alone Nizra B'Kedusha. But Rav is introducing a problem of Arias, of Shash Arias in the case of Geri Vigiores. And this will justify why we have to wait the three months after the Geris for them to get married. And the Xer is going to be because lest the sun come to be Miyavim, the wife of his maternal brother, if they don't wait the three months. Because it could be that at the time of the Gerus, she was already pregnant. When she'll give birth, they think, again, she, she, if she gets married immediately after the Gerus, they'll think that the child that's born is Nizra B'Kedusha. He was conceived after the Gerus B'Kedusha. Now when she gives birth to another son, following this one, and there'll be a Yibum situation because everybody assumes that they're brothers, and they're assuming that Nizru B'Kedusha, and that makes them brothers through the father. Lamaisa, in truth, that's not so. It was not Nizru B'Kedusha. It was before the Geirus. And then we have Allah Hastam Nachris Bechezkas Zona Veino Achiv Me Aviv Elamana Aim. So he's going to marry Ashes Achiv Me Imo, which is a Chiv Kares. So the Gemara now asks Akasha on Rava. Mosri Rav Hananya quotes a Brice of the Kulon with regard to all the Nashim. That the Chacham said you're not allowed to marry, or well, they can't fall for Yibu. Uh, in the past, we've spoken about um, Shniel Sarayos. Is Bekulon and Ikori Bahen Mishum Takanas Erva. So, all these ladies that we said they're not, the Chacham said they're not allowed to get married or to be Misyabim, it's because of Takanas Erva. The Khan, here, where all the other women are allowed to get married if they wait the three months. Is ain't any curry by him, Takonas Erva, but rather be shum Takonas Vlad. So Shneas are rice is Takonas Erva, but here the requirement of Shlosha Hadashim. Is Mishum Takonis Vlad. Not Erva, but Vlad. Vlad meaning so that we know who's the father of the Vlad. The Isa, according to Robin's interpretation, that you have to wait because of the Xera of Shema Yisa, Esachoso, of is Kulu, all the Takonis Chacham, Mishum Takonis Erva. Why do you set up a, a uh, contrast by telling us? That in the case of of Yibum,
where immediately after the death of the brother, her wife falls for him and they were misyamin. That's already takana savlat. You know, if it's within three months, we don't know if it's a Sheval Rishon, Sheval Sheni, or Te Shal Rishon. The Isa, Kulu Mishum Takana Sarva, the Brisa should have used the uniform principle to explain all these halachas of Takana Sarva. So the Gemara answers. Hi, Mishum Takonis Vlad, the Lolifka Behu Erva. When the Brisa of Rabbi Chandanya uses the terminology of Mishum Takonis Vlad, you should understand that what that means is the Vlad will get involved possibly in an Easter Erva. And in order that the Vlad that is born should not get involved, heaven forbid, in the Isra Achos, achos Omi Aviv, that I understand very well. In the case of Shar Noshim, Sha Osu Lehemli Nase Olovis, Tiknu Kemi Shum Takonasa Ishva Isha Atzmam, Shlo Yinosu Zelazemi Shum Takonas Erva. So the reason why the Brisa begins with Takonis Erva is because we're talking about a general situation. And we have a Takona in the Ishvi Isha Atzman. They should not get married because of Takonis Erva, meaning to save them from possibility of an Easter Arab. The Gemara says the following. Now we start a whole new discussion about why three months minimum. If she wants to get remarried within a period of two months, that's the that's the sveka. And it's not enough that she waits two months to get remarried. And this we understand. If he'll get married after two months <clears throat> through uh, following the death of his brother, and she'll give birth after seven months, we don't know from whom she became pregnant, who's the father of the child. Ibartisha Lakama. She's a nine month old, the child is a nine month old baby to the first pregnancy, as the pregnancy from the first husband, the late husband. And if <clears throat> she gives birth after seven months, is we're afraid that maybe she got pregnant from the second husband. And that's a logical possibility. And the baby was born after seven months. Ella says the Gemara, I don't understand. I, I, <laughs> I can see where two months is a problem. But what about one month? <laughs> the Tinase. And if you'll get into a situation of Shiva Yolda, Hi Shiva de Basra. There's no question that this baby, after seven months of pregnancy, was conceived by the second husband. Because had she been conceived by the first husband before he died, then this child will be a, will have been born eight months after conception. And we have a principle I know which one Khadoshim And therefore, if this baby is viable, <clears throat> we must conclude that it is an eight-month baby to the second husband. That's impossible. Hi, Bartisha Lakamo. Because again, a baby that's born if eight months cannot survive. If this ba baby survived, it must be a nine-month baby. 
If it's a nine-month baby, that means the father is the original uh, brother who died. So since there's no viable eight-month possibility, then one month of Havchana should be enough. The grant is no. Inami litmanya yolda. If it shall give birth after eight months, following the second marriage or remarriage, that's not going to be proof that the baby is the child of the first husband. Ikel Amemar de Basra. It's very possible that this Bukhar, this Ben, is the Ben of the second brother. And if you'll tell me, well, how could he have been born eight months after the Suin? That's not because the Vlad is no like Shmona Chadoshim Liburo. Dilma, perhaps we should be afraid of the possibility that she didn't get pregnant immediately when she got remarried, but rather Shtayuye Ishtaya Chodesh Echoriyama. They didn't consummate the marriage immediately, but they waited a month. And a month later, she became pregnant. So it's a Ben Shevel Hashani. And therefore, they said, it's not enough to wait for one month because you'll still get into a possibility of a suffix. We won't know who the father is. So it's 2.5 months. And then let her get remarried. The Ela Shiva Yolda if she gives birth seven months later after her second marriage, hi bar shiva lebasrahu. This baby is seven months, and the father of the, the second husband is the father of the baby. It's impossible for him to be the Ben Arishon because more than nine months have passed since his death. Ayoletis Letisha, any Oletis Achar Tisha Chadosh. So there's no option after nine months. The Ela Shitu Pal the Yolda. And if on the other hand, she gave birth six and a half months after the second marriage, then Hai Bar Tisha the Kamahu. Then we could absolutely be certain that this Vlad is a nine month old Vlad to the first husband. The Ibar Basrahu, if the child is the child of the second husband, then it turns out the child was born six and a half months after it was conceived by Shitu Balgalo Chaye. A baby that's born after six and even six and a half months since his conception cannot survive. And therefore, we definitely have to conclude that this child is the end of the reach of. So why do we have to wait three full months? Let's wait two and a half months. So the answer is that if we would wait two and a half months, we would still not be successful in making a distinction between this possible father and that possible father. And even if we'll say that she gave birth six and a half months after the Nisuin to the second husband, that doesn't prove that this Ben is the Ben of the Rishon. The Ikel Amemet the Basrahu. It's very possible to say that this possible to raise the possibility that this son is the son of the second husband. And even if he was born after 6.5 months to the date of the Nisuin, the Vlad who's born after six and a half months can survive. The Omer Marzucha, Philoman, the Omer Yolis, the Ticha, any Yolis, the Mekutoin, is Yodel, is Shimmy Yolis, Yolis, the Mekutoin. So we're going we're gonna to pick this up in a few minutes. Thank you so much.